So, so you're doing uh, uh, I switched my hat, by the way. I switched it to my, my Yankees hat because that's where, that's where I grew up, by Yankee Stadium. <laughs> the city of New York, Boricua from the Bronx. <laughs> All right, man. Even though we lost, even though we lost the playoffs, man, it's good. I like it. Yeah, I don't even follow baseball, man. I don't know anything about baseball. I went to one baseball game when I was maybe a young teenager, like early teens. Oh, really? And I was so bored. I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But I used to run on that track. You know where Yankee Stadium is today? There was a track there. So oh, okay. that was actually the track and the Yankee Stadium was where the track is now. So they switched them. Yeah. So I, I used to run all the time there, and I always hear. Doo, 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 doo. So you know, <laughs> even though even though I don't follow the sport, um, I have an affinity for the team. Okay. You know? <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, man. So I'm I'm at the City College of New York. We're doing some. I'm in an anthropology class, and we're just you know my fun research class, topic. by the way. Huh? Yeah, anthropology was fun. I remember that class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not bad at all. It's pretty interesting. Mm. So I'm just you know I'm just like. Uh, I was thankful to find you because I know a lot of kids are having a difficulty finding someone they could interview. But my project is basically how the Bronx change over time. I grew up okay. in the Bronx. 20, I'm 25 years old. Grew up, lived in the Bronx. I live in Parkchester area. So okay. been here my whole life. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you, you know what's up with the Bronx. Yeah. Now, full, dis full disclosure, I live in Queens now. Um, okay. You know, so... You know, got to throw that out there. I ain't, I'm going to fake the funk over here acting like I'm still, you know, living in the Bronx. My family's still in the BX. Um, right. And I, you know, I, I, when people ask me where I'm from, I don't say Queens. I say I'm from the Bronx. I live in Queens. Yeah. I live in Queens. I'm from the Bronx. So that's where I was, I was raised. That's where I grew up. That's where I'm from. So I created the page, you know, the, the growing up Bronx page. My family's still in the Bronx. So, you know, um, I might not know everything that's going on in the Bronx, but you know, it's where I'm from and I've, you know, I've seen, I've seen changes and then I've seen other changes. So, you know, I'll try to answer as best I can, man. So it's cool. That's all you could do, man. All right. Angel, thank you again for helping me out, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, all cool. right. First questions. Have you, have you lived in the Bronx your whole life? Well, I just answered that one. <laughs> I, 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 I lived in the Bronx. I, so I came to New York City from Puerto Rico when I was five years old. I spent a, a few months in a shelter with my family in Brooklyn. I spent some time in some friends' houses when we were bouncing around. But ultimately, we ended up in the Bronx. And the first place actually was in Featherbed, Featherbed Lane. I don't know if you're familiar where that's at. That's um, like... Hmm. I, I think in the train, it would, the four train, it would be the Mount Eden stop. Oh, I went, I went to Tap High School. Okay. Yeah, so you're a little further further up. So yeah. it's, it's a little bit back. Um, yeah. there, there was a, it's, it's kind of this odd place, but the apartment we lived at was in Featherbed, Featherbed Lane. I don't remember the, the building number, but the, the, the building next to us fell and came into our living room. So there was like, uh, it's it crazy, man. The, in Spanish, they say like the walls, the boulders came in and came into our, our living room. Fortunately, we were in a different room, but that, like, that, was, that was one of my earliest memories. In fact, I almost forgot about that. Wow. <laughs> Damn building across this, not the whole building, right? Like, like a, a portion of it, big boulders that were kind of like our back came down and came into our living room. And then we spent some more time in the shelters. <laughs> you know? Was anyone hurt or no? Say again? Was anyone hurt or no? No, no, thankfully, oh, thank no. God. Yeah, thank God, yeah. man. Thank God. That was, that was wild, man. I, <laughs> I had complete, because I was about to tell you my first place was in Walton. And I was like, no, wait a minute. Before that, we were in Featherbed Lane. And then the building came down on us, right? You know, it's just, it's yeah. just a minor detail I, I forgot. Yeah, so I've, I've been here since I was five years old, my, you know, my earliest memories. Um, and I moved, um, to Brooklyn and Queens in like late, late twenties, early thirties. Um, you know, so most of my life is Bronx. Bronx. Gotcha. So tell me what your childhood was like growing up in the Bronx. Um, well, so, so there was like two, two, two facets of it. Right. Um, I was one of the good kids, you know, right? So I was like basically shunned where I come from. 
you know, where I grew up, I was looked at as one of the bad kids because I was one of the good kids. So the streets and the neighborhood and, and the people out there always victimized me. You know, um, I used to get jumped. I used to get robbed. I used to get slapped up. I always got, you know, pistol whip and the blades on my face. It was really rough because I was a good kid. Yeah. Now, when you're, when you're one of those good kids and you see these things happening, you know, you start making friends with other kids and then that took me to another phase when I started hanging out with gangbangers and, um, you know, heading down a different path um, because I didn't want to be victimized anymore, you know? So um, thankfully I, I ran into a, you know, I'm not going to mention any details cause I don't want anybody getting shot, but <laughs> you know, you know I, I ran into a senior um, ranking person and um, within this organization and um he kind of smacked me up and and uh he told me he didn't want me uh hanging out with those dudes he he's like you're not one of these guys like listen if you need protection if you you're having problems you come you talk to me but you don't hang out with these guys you don't do the things that they're doing i heard what you guys did i heard i heard about this particular event and um you know, I thought he was going to be proud of me because I was rolling with his homies, yeah. you know, um, helping his homies out, the people who are under him. But, and, you know, and at the time he just slapped me up, man, and uh, roughed me up. But, but in hindsight, probably saved my life because then I went back to doing what I'm supposed to do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. I, I, so it, it was rough, man. And I, I grew up in the late eighties, early nineties. And, um, the BX was rough, man. I, I mean, I know people have crazier stories than I have, but, you know, I had some pretty, uh, pretty crazy, crazy experience. Like I said, I was getting roughed up. I was getting beat up. You know, um, we had gangs all around, you know. Um, so, yeah, man, it was rough. I mean, the, let, me, let, me not, let me not entirely tarnish that, right? There were good things. Like you growing up in the Bronx, we grew up, with our little circle of friends. We used to actually hang out outside. We used to go bike riding. Okay. You know, we used to, we used to, um, you know, we call it cruising. We'd go cruising. Now half the time we'd go cruising, somebody would try to steal our bike, but that's a whole other story. I don't want to keep it all negative. I want to show exactly. some of the yeah. positive, yeah, give you know, us yeah. You know, we um we used to go to each other's houses and play video games with each other, Nintendo, the the Sega Genesis, you know, and I made some lifelong bonds that I mean, you can make friends now and stuff. Like my son's 20, he's got his boys, but I don't think they had the growing up experience that we did. Like I would go to my window, oh, and he would come and we would play video games together. Like that, you don't have now, but that we had. And that's, that was definitely one of the positives. You had your group of friends from the block. You all live in the same building or the building across the street. You're always together. You play video games together. You do everything together and you make lifelong bonds man so that that is definitely one of the pros of of you know back then that's one of the po most positive things for me was those bonds i made those friendships you know so would you say that the social life like what you just said like you know yelling out the window or who will come play would you say that change now is the social life still the same you think or it's totally different from from what you grew up in to now well i think the kids today communicate differently they don't have to scream out the window anymore. <laughs> you know, they just, they just send a text. They just call each other, they message each other. They Facebook each other. My son be on the computer talking with his boys on FaceTime and his girlfriend and stuff. So it's different. And also the friendships because, and again, I, I, I'm not a kid growing up in the Bronx today. So I don't know what their experience is like, but from the world I see, like my son can't go to the window and scream for his friend because his friend is a friend from high school that lives five train stations away, uh, 20 minutes away. Um, he lives in the city. Like the way he's made friends, the way the kids that I know have made friends have been at school and things like that, where you don't have that. Um, like my son doesn't know anybody in this building. You know, when we, we, we lived in the Bronx for a while, he didn't know anybody in his building. His friends were friends from school and in other places. So they, they don't have that. But again, I can't speak from the perspective of a kid who's growing up in the Bronx right now. Yeah. So um, my son's growing up different. You know, he's growing up in a different, um, different borough, different lifestyle. So I cannot entirely speak to that. 
Um, I do know when I, when I go to the Bronx to visit my family, I still see kids hanging out. I still see them hanging out in front of the building and stuff. Yeah. So I would argue that they're probably growing up the same way with some modifications due to technology. Got you. Okay. Mm. I like that. I like that, man. All right. <laughs> Another question. Uh, how has the economic status of those living in the Bronx changed over time? What do you, what's your thoughts on that economic wise? Well, I can only speak to what I've seen. Yeah. And um, from my perspective, using my own family and our experience and stuff, mm -hmm. it really hasn't changed. Um, you know, we, we grew up um, fairly poor, you know, um, and we had government assistance and stuff and things like that. And my family still very much depends on that. You know, of course, now... Um, if my mom needs something, she can always reach out to me, you know, um, if she's having a problem or whatever. Um, so she has more options, but in terms of rent and things like that, we still depend on that um, for, you know, for my family. Um, I feel like, uh, and this hasn't directly gotten to where my mom is, mm -hmm. um, the, the face of the Bronx is changing. It's becoming more gentrified. And um, the cost, well, the cost of living. Well, let me not go into that. So let me stay focused on this one. All right, all right. Um, <laughs> in terms of of what's going on, I I feel like, again, as far as my family, the people that I grew up with, the parents that I'm still in touch with, um, it's still basically the same situation. Except again, you have some more commodities like the phones and the laptops, you know. Um, my mom's, you know, um, high risk, so she spent a lot of time at home, but she's playing Facebook games and watching Lifetime and stuff, you know, um, still managing to entertain herself where maybe back in the days we wouldn't have had access to that because it wasn't affordable. Gotcha. Yeah. Now it's become more affordable to everybody. So, yeah. you know, um, but as economically, I, I, I can only speak to my specific family and exactly. the situation hasn't changed very much okay. you know ex except for the kids you know like we've moved out and we're doing our own thing yeah you know um, we're living we're adults now and you know my mom knows that if she ever needs anything you know i'm here you know um so at least you don't have to worry about that you know what's up man do you think gentrification what you were just talking about played a role in this change no 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 um gentrification is affecting neighborhoods um, I don't think it's gotten to my mom's yet, you okay. know? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think our neighborhood is still pretty rough. <laughs> you know, the, 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 I call them pioneers, right? The, the white people that venture out yeah. and move into, into these, these neighborhoods where they're typically not from, you know, exactly. um, I call, I've always referred to them as pioneers. When you see a white person, it's like, Whoa, that's a pioneer. That's a brave one. You know, they're, yeah. they're starting, you know, so they haven't gotten to our, I haven't really seen them. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever I go out there, I've never seen any pioneers yet. So we're not affected, but I know other people who, who have been financially, you know, um, they're being, um, their rents are going up. They're having problems, you know, um, because they're, the neighborhood's changing. Yeah. It becomes, you become priced out, but that hasn't hit my family yet wow. or any of the, of the neighborhoods that I, was involved with, so to speak. Okay. So you say like more, the, the neighborhoods are more, uh, like the stores there, they're more like community wise than corporation wise, right? Well, you still got the bodegas, you know, yeah, that are still, yeah, you know, yeah, all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. They're still kind of owned by like the Dominican cats, you know, the, the, you know, like the dudes that, you know, they still, you know, at least that's what I've seen. Now, yeah. honestly, who the hell knows behind the scenes what's going on? You know, who knows who's funding and stuff, but, I mean, when I go to the bodega, I don't, I, I see the Dominican dude. I'm like, hey, get out, you know, like, I, I just, I'm assuming that's the owner, but, you know, who knows, you know? Um, but like I said, I, I, I haven't seen the gentrification in my area just yet. There's no, you know, maybe a little closer up, like to 170, 170 171st. Yeah. One of my buddies told me they put a, like a fancy hipster looking restaurant there. Okay. So, you know, it's starting a little by little inches away. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, slowly but surely, probably. You never know, right? Yeah. And it'd be nice if, if the neighborhoods got better 
and and people can still stay there, but that's not the way it works. You know, they they and, and I'm not trying to attack white people. Don't you know, don't get me wrong. It could be it, in fact then it's not even only white people. It's let's say hipster types or more well off people who's you know, trust fund people and they could be from any you know race or whatever. So I don't want to attack any specific group with gentrification, you know. Um but generally those people move in and they force the others out or into further deeper into an area or stuff. That's the way it works. You know, um, I, I mean, I'd love for my mom to have um, a Whole Foods, you know, near her and all these things so she can eat healthy, but that's not what's going to happen. My mom gets a Whole Food in her neighborhood. They're going to try to force her out. That's yeah, the, exactly. yeah. that's the reality, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, why are we going to keep her in this apartment when we can get it to one of these trust fund babies and, yeah. and, uh, you know, charge them an arm and a leg. Cause, you know, so. <laughs> the reality of it, you know, but thank, you know, so far it hasn't reached our, our hood. Not yet, but hopefully yeah, not yeah. you never know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, how has the Bronx changed physically over time? Public spaces, parks, housing, the roads. Well, I, I noticed a lot of buildings went up in the lots we used to play. Okay. Um, so that's one thing I noticed a sh my old block like I go to my old block and there are now maybe maybe four new full scale large buildings wow. in that one block yeah. where where it used to be that they were empty lots where you know we'd have the mattresses and we'd be playing in the mattresses trying to dodge um uh, uh heroin needles like that's that's what it was like you know we'd be out there playing trying not to get cut getting stabbed and it's like oh shit it's cool you know like it's just a shot of heroin hey man i feel kind of lightheaded you know um tagging the walls whatever those are all buildings now you know as a matter of fact i buried my hamster in one of those lots and there's a building on top of her so they desecrated where i buried my hamster man you know like Damn. You know, um, the, the, um, obviously, you know, the, the park, um, Yankee stadium, they changed that area. They moved the stadium and they put a track there. I forget. I think it was called Joyce Kilmer. That also changed. Um, the grand concourse looks different to me. Yeah. Or there's, you know, they made it look, they made it look nicer. You know, um, the statue in 161, you know, that statue in the park, yeah, that that looks way nicer than than it was back in the like they've made it look nice, you yeah. know, they've made it look very nice. So, I mean, I I, I mean I've I've been to some areas that look still kind of rough, but I see a lot of difference at least where I I was at. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Four lots and also four buildings. Yeah, and and not only that, that's only my block. Now, yeah. if I go to the other blocks. It, I noticed new buildings there too. So all the lots have have now have, I'm talking large, full occupancy. Like, like I, I know I could just think of it, right? And I could visualize the block. Clark Place where I grew up um, near 169. One lot, there's a big building there. Next to it, there's another building. Down the block towards Jerome, there's two buildings. Across, there's another building. It's like, Three or three, four, four, four or five buildings that came up in that block since I've gone. So that's hundreds and hundreds of more families and kids in the area. So much more population than when I was there. Yeah, it's crazy. It's wild. It blew. When I saw it, I was mind blown. I, I, I just, I couldn't believe it because in my mind it was just yesterday I was there, but it's been years. Yeah. You know, it's been years. When and go back there, it's like they drive who props. Like, whoa, where, where, where do oh. those come from? I was like, what the hell is this? Like I was going to visit my mom in um, 167th okay. and I was passing by and I saw it and I said, hold up. And I walked down, I had to see, I had to walk down and I looked and I was like, holy crap. There's all these, I was just mind blown. Like, you know, wow. it, it, because it's literally hundreds and hundreds of more families on that one block. And then if you figure that proportionally to every block, yeah, you know, the Fordham Road, and it's like even more buildings over there, right? Yeah, I haven't been to Fordham too much. I only like the, um, you know, like the the marketing area, you know, where they have the yeah. stores and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, that, that main strip, right? By correct. Fordham, correct. 
Yeah, yeah, that that and and that didn't look that much different to me. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't I did notice that Monroe College put up a lot more buildings, because I went to Monroe and oh. um, we we didn't have that many buildings. Wow. Um, so I was walking around there and I saw that we had other halls now and and other areas, other spaces. So the campus has grown for the college. Definitely expanded. Yeah. Yeah, that I saw, I remember, and that's, that's around Fordham, too. Yeah. yeah. And they also got a spot in Flushing, but that's in Queens. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. What was your favorite spot growing up, and why? Spot as in hanging out or eating or you just in... Eating, hanging out, socializing. What was, like, your go-to spot? Like, if you're having a bad day, I don't know. Anything. I mean, man, the, the place that, that we went to was my boy Raul's house, man. <laughs> That was that was our go-to spot. Like we all hung out in each other's houses, but I think um, we will all probably agree that his house was the the most fun to be at. You know, so that's where I spent a lot of my time. Okay. You know, um, there was a place down the block called White Star Fried Chicken. Um, <laughs> oh crap! I remember that? <laughs> oh fuck yeah, man! That was that was a, you know. So I used to go to White Star Fried Chicken when I wanted to be alone. Like sometimes, sometimes, or or I go to the roof, but you know, yeah. uh, uh, white star fried chicken was one of the spots, you know, when, you know, maybe I was mad about something or whatever, I would go down there, get a slice, um, get a, you know, some fried chicken and a drink and just sit by myself and eat it until somebody came and found me, you know, like, you know, that was one of my spots. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I mean, if I, I'm trying to visualize, you know, um, I, I definitely used to go to the roof on occasion. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there was always risk, you know, you could run into a crackhead or, you know, somebody's up there, you know, like you can, you know, you can, you can have a problem there and stuff. But I, I mean, thinking back, I, White Star was a spot, my boy Raul's house. Um, the streets weren't very welcoming to me. So it wasn't like I, I, I'd hang out outside and do stuff, but um, I, I, I never felt like I could just. Sometimes I just stand in front of the building. That that was, you know, I can remember that having a peaceful effect as long as none of the, you know, the 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 trouble people were around. Yeah. You know? Oh man. So like, so um, do you think the the streets changed from what it was eighties, nineties to now? Do you do you think it changed dramatically? Do you think it changed a little? Because I mean, I go to Grant's um Grant's. I'm sorry, I go to um. Grand Concourse a little bit because I have my, I have some family that lives in Fordham, so I always pass through there. And like you know, you even in Fordham, you see it's like you always see people on the streets. You always see people mm -hmm. having a good time, socializing in front of their buildings by the local bodega, whatever. But do you like from what you're saying? It's like it, like it wasn't safe. Like you know, you had to like defend yourself. Like you go outside, you shouldn't be expecting trouble. Do you think? Well, I, but I was a I was what you would consider. I don't know if you're familiar with the term, but I was like a herb. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard that word, but that's like like a target. Okay. You know, so like I was a, the nerdy kid. So I was a target. Whereas some of the other guys didn't, their experience was different than mine. Because yeah. they had older brothers or they, they were in gangs or, you know, um, they, they held their own, you know, I was just for some reason, I was perceived as weak and targeted. So if I was in front of the building, and one of the, the, the you know, the punks would come over, hey, Rod, you know, Angel, you got a dollar? Nah. Let me check you, you know, and, and check me for a dollar. Next time you come out here, bring some money, bro. I'm going to slap you in the face. You know, like, it was like that, you know, like, like this was, you know, this was the, you know, and the few times that I try to fight back, then I get jumped or they pull a weapon, you know? So it was, you know, it wasn't like, like I'd want to go in front of the building. And, and at first I have to look and see who's outside. Nobody cool. Then I can go stand up front. But if I see them, then I wouldn't go outside because they would come after me and mess with me, you know? And so I got a little older. When I started getting older, I started getting bigger. I started pumping iron, yeah. you know, and, and then I got, you know, people didn't bother me anymore, but um, pretty much throughout like, you know, junior high school and, and high school, that whole time it was just straight victimization. And I dropped out of high school because of it. Oh, wow. You know? I didn't drop out because I had bad grades. I dropped out because I was getting, you know. So, so was you, getting, say, you say bullied? I hate to use the term bully because it wasn't like somebody was going like, you give me your lunch. I was getting my ass whooped. 
you know, I don't know. Even laugh, but the way you're saying no, it, no, 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 it's 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 funny to, today, you know. It, yeah. it, so when people when people think bullies, it's like, hey, you give me your milk. Nah, it wasn't like that. It was like, Ch -ch -ch, you know, run your sneakers, run your, you know. So the term bully to me implies an easier situation. Yeah. You know, but but yeah, I guess that's the the word to describe it. Bullied with a little extra violence and yeah. guns and knives. <laughs> you know. Crap. You know? How did you like? But, Personally, and when I fight, how you, how, yeah, how did you like, you know, take your ground? Like you have a gun pointed to you right now. Like, what, what, you can't do anything, right? I mean, no, at that point, you got to comply. Yeah, you got to comply. So what, what would happen is like, you know, I start fighting some guy. I remember this dude, I, he, he came to me and he wanted to, he was picking on me. And I said, so what's up, man? Let's do this. I got mad and I started beating him, punching him. You know, I was doing karate so I could fight, you know. So I was pop, 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 popping him, popping him. And then his friends showed up and they, they flashed a gun. And I had to stop. And the guy came over. He's like, what's up now? Slap me. Punched me. Slap me. Took a, put a blade on my neck. He said, I'll give you a buck 50. And I'll slice you up. And then the, the guys who he was with, some of them were from my block. They're like, yo, don't do that. Don't do that. Too far. You know, like, like they was like, nah, yo, son, 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 son. You know, like, because now at that point, it'll involve the law, you know, and 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 I would be able to identify some of them. Yeah. You know, so that would be going too far. It's one thing if you punch me in the face and you kick the shit out of me and they ask Angel, what happened? I'm nothing. I'm cool. You know, I'm cool. I'm cool. But if you slash my face, you know, that's probably going to be like, now, nah, now I got to, you know, now I got to call the cops. Now I got to. So the guy stopped him. But that was, a, that's what would happen if I start winning. <laughs> You know, then I get jumped. So he slapped me up and then they all jumped me and you know, don't forget your place, you bitch, you know, and snap me up and, you know, but in hindsight, you know, that guy was a sucker, Yeah. you know, because he couldn't take his, his losing like a man. He had to bring his friends to help him out. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so yeah. at the time, you know, I was humiliated. I felt, you know, I felt like, you know, but when I look back on it now, I'm like, hey, this guy's a sucker. You know, he, he ain't a man. I was more of a man than he was. You know, I was more of a man than he was, but at the time it was torment. You know. Wow, man. So you, so you, so you do believe that the streets have changed? You know, um, when I go to the old neighborhood, I still see kids hanging out. Okay. Um, I still see it, and I think the nature of of again, I don't know what the nerdy kid is going through today. Yeah. You know that kid growing up in in the block. I don't know what his experience is like. Um. So it's it's hard to say. Um, I in general, I feel like New York City is going back to that era. Oh wow! Okay, that's good. Wow, that's interesting. You know, um, because I remember a period where I started to feel safer in the streets as an adult. Even as a teenager, things started to change, and the last few years, I, I mean, look at the news now. How many shootings have there been in New York over a weekend? You know, I had two shootings right across, uh, around the corner from me, oh, you wow. know, so it, I, I feel like we're reverting, if yeah. anything. So we may have made some progress, but now we're starting to revert. And I'm speaking New York in general, but yeah. I mean, the Bronx, the Bronx has had its fair share of, of this stuff happening. So I think it's just, just the city in general. Gotcha, man. Wow. You and know, I, 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 I seen one of your posts about, you posted about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it was, uh. I guess a hooker spot. Um, in in the Bronx when I was growing up, or yeah, I, I did, did I believe you posted that? No, or, or am I mistaken? Well, maybe, well, I I I spoke about dropped in um M eighties in the house. I don't yeah, know. If that's, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> tell me a little. Tell me a little about that, if you don't mind. Dude, no, nah, not at all, man. That that was fun. <laughs> Yo, know, we had we had a, they put like. And and I try to measure my language because I don't want to be offensive. They they put a spot where where women of the night could entertain. Uh, we'll call them Johns, right? We we could offend the men because they're you know. So so women of the night would entertain these men, and I at that time I have no recollection of um of wanting to clean up the streets. Okay. You know, I just thought it would be funny. To wait for them to start fucking and then throw an M80 in there, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, so like they were all in separate rooms, so it wasn't gonna hit them, but yeah. it was loud as shit, you know. So 
in hindsight, I'm like, well, we were cleaning up the neighborhood, but I have no recollection of us thinking, let's get these people out of here. You know, it was more like, yo, how fucked up would it be if you're about to fuck and your dick is hard and you're about to fuck and, and all of a sudden, boom. So we, we started throwing M80s in there when, whenever we, we see the guy go in, we wait. 15, 20 minutes, you know, they're about to get it going at that point. Yeah. And then we would throw an M80 in there and then we would run, you know. Damn. You know, dude came out and started shooting at us once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he watched when we were running and he started shooting. So, you know, it was certainly a dangerous trade, but we, it, it got rid of the place. They got rid of it because oh. now you have, you know, you have shootings happening there that's bringing them heat. And you have um, a bunch of like street kids throwing M80s in there, so yeah. <laughs> they down. Yeah, they shut it down, man. So they moved it somewhere else. Wow. And the last question, Angel. Mm -hmm. What do you think changed the most in the Bronx? I know you don't live there now, but just you know, just like I mean, just by you visiting your mom or like the many times you go to the Bronx, what do you think changed the most overall from the '80s and '90s to now? Is it the social life? Is it the economic life? Is it the landscapes? Like, what do you think changed the most? Uh, I mean, from my perspective, I think it's just the appearance. Okay. Yeah, the appearance of the Bronx. In the areas that I've gone to, some look nicer. Okay. You know, um, certainly what, what I'd consider my old stomping grounds, you know, those areas where I used to hang out and stuff, they're, you know, the, the, the park, the concourse, the, the track, you know, it all looks much nicer. The train station where my mom lives looks phenomenal now. It's actually more, I think, more events than mine here in Queens. You know, it looks way nicer. You know, they redid the whole thing, you know, so that's nice. Um, I mean, more trees on the block. Yeah, so it, it, yeah. more landscape changes, you would say. Yeah, I, I mean, from my perception as an outsider now, that's what I've noticed the most. Gotcha. You know. Um, just one, one more question with the train station how was that back in the days i mean this and it's totally off topic but for, but for me from my personal knowledge mm -hmm. like when i watch movies i mean like uh i don't know i can't name it off of my head but one from the uh, back in the days and they would shoot in the subways was it really like that like you know like crazy like dim looking was it oh yeah like, graffiti like, yeah the, the trains were covered in graffiti one time one of the the train windows came off and it hit my sister's foot and cut her you know, like, um, you know, like the train was coming in and the window flew out and it just hit her. Thank God it didn't take off her leg, you know, like it oh, cut her and stuff, you know. So it was like that, man. They were filthy, you know, um, graffiti covered, urine everywhere, you know, definitely dark. And you go in there now, that's just beautiful, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's super nice. And we're like, what the hell, man? Why didn't they do this back when I was here, you know? Yeah. Um you know, the train, but that's, that's the, what I'm talking about. Like you go in the train now and there's people in there with boom boxes, blasting music, smoking cigarettes. I hadn't seen that since the eighties, man. You know, uh, and I'm starting to see it again more recently. You know, I, I don't ride the train all that much cause I work near home. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I've been working from home, but when I do go to the office, I'm still very close. Yeah. Um, and I only take the train to go to the gym to teach classes. So but those times when I have taken the train, like if I'm going in the Bronx, I, I, I immediately I go in there and somebody's in there bump, bumping music with a boom box yeah. in the train. And I'm like, bro, like, what's up? What's up with the head? No, I'm not going to say nothing to him because I'm not looking to get into a fight. But I hadn't seen that in a long time. So, you know, but in terms of aesthetics, it all looks nicer. Yeah. You know, the trains look nicer. The the train stop is is nicer. But back in the days, yeah, it was you know, it's dirty, graffiti, rats everywhere. I still see rats, though. You know, but you know, it's not. You know, but it's it's it, it's way different. You know. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, Angel. I mean, that wraps it up for me. Anything else you want to tell me about the Bronx? Like, well, else? you know, um, I just I don't want to go out on a negative note. So, I mean, I I wouldn't. <sighs> I wouldn't change anything about my past. Okay. You know, um, I, I, I mean, I'm so far separated from it right now that I don't remember what it felt like. I know I, when I was growing up, I was like suicidal. I was in a bad place because of the, the violence, you know? Yeah. Um, 
So it's hard for me to um, relate to the person that I may have been then. You know, like one thing I've learned as I've gotten older is that depression and, and things like that, you, you, when you're not in that state, it's hard for you to think or see what you would have seen then, exactly. you know? So today I say I wouldn't change it, but maybe if I was that kid again and I'd be like, no, change this shit, <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you know? So, so you know, I, I don't want to entirely say that, but it wasn't all bad, you know? There, there was definitely those nice experiences, those, those bonds, you know, those friendships, playing outside. You know, that was one of the, the coolest things about growing up in the Bronx. Gotcha. You know, those bonds and friendships that you made, um, you know, that's, that's, you can't, you know, like, that's irreplaceable, you know. Like, well, that's great, man. Well, Angel, again, thank you so much for your time. Sounds cool, great. man. I appreciate it. It's Angel, fun. Thank you, man. I really appreciate your help with this. Yeah, man. You got it. All right, man. Take care. It's yeah. nice meeting you again. All right. Likewise, man. Take care. You. you are listening to the NYC Talking Podcast www.nyctalking.com Please like NYC Talking on Facebook. Please follow Angel R. Talk on Twitter and Instagram. We are NYC Talking, the realest lifestyle blog ever. Thanks for listening.